Uh, thank you so much, Chenon Tobacco again. And I would like to welcome uh, Corinna Andreoyo from Simon Fraser University. She's going to chair the next session, the final one for the day. Corinna, uh, back to you and thanks for being part of the taste. I miss uh, bringing you to the airport when we used to, to be there at Triumph. And uh, nice to, to, to hear from you again. Thank you. Hello, Good Hello uh, Nico. Hello, everybody from Canada. I'm Corinna Androyo, and I am an associate professor at Simon Fraser University. And it's a pleasure to chair this session. We have uh, three talks. And the first one is by... As Vindini Muronga from Nelson Mandela University. And uh, uh, the talk is uh, entitled Relativistic Fluid Dynamics for Nuclear Matter Under Extreme Conditions in Nucleus Nucleus Collisions and Astrophysics. So uh, please go ahead and uh, remember to allow five minutes for uh, questions. So you have only 25 minutes for your talk. Thank you. Hope you can hear me and you can see my talk. Yes, we can see your talk. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, Nico and the organizers and uh, I would like to, to also, they thank you for inviting me. So the talk was um, geared towards um, especially South African students. Um, uh, uh, many colleagues uh, have probably seen some of what I'm going to, to talk about, uh, including the last year's um, as tests. Uh, but this year it's a different talk, of course. So thank you very much. Uh, let me take this away. So um, the outline of my talk will be really looking at uh, what am I referring to by nuclear matter under extreme conditions. And then I will talk about the application of relativistic fluid dynamics in studying a nuclear matter under extreme conditions. So for those of you who might be wondering where am I from, where is Nelson Mandela University? It is uh, about 750 kilometers east of uh, the University of Western Cape, where the, 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 the host of the conference is. Um, basically, I will be uh, uh, focusing on the subatomic uh, 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 particles. I will not be focusing on the properties of the, the, the elements as they are in this periodic table, though nuclear physics has got a lot to say about the periodic table as it is projected here. Uh, I will be talking about a sort of new state of matter, which is the mix of quarks and leptons and also looking at the hadrons that are not there in the periodic table except two of those. And uh, just to, to briefly say that we know that um, um, at the uh, 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 sub-nuclear level, we have four uh, forces of interactions of which the last one, it's, 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 it's not uh, uh, very much uh, important but they're strong electromagnetic and weak. They are very important in the study of uh, uh, nuclear matter. But I will show that gravity will become more important as we look at the astrophysical applications. So it is nice to have this table for the students in the audience if your university does not have. In order to, to follow what I'm talking about, then it will be important for you to have this um, chat in your corridors. Um, then we, 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 we start in the beginning and the big picture here is how can we connect the small and the largest, meaning the nuclear matter that I'm talking about, connecting it with the largest, even the universe itself. That, that's a very big idea and it's a very big dream, uh, but it's a dream uh, that uh, both particle physicists, nuclear physicists, working together with astrophysicists can really revolutionize the way we understand 
uh, uh, how nature works. And uh, on this plot or on this picture, uh, which, which is probably the picture that I explained a lot in the last taste, and especially focusing on, on this region here, uh, this is the region uh, uh, which I will be focusing on just for, for those who are looking at the picture now. Uh, the first variable there is time. So I will be looking at a microsecond, uh, about a microsecond after the Big Bang. And I will be looking at temperatures that are about of the order of 10 to the power of 12 Kelvin. And the direction of, of travel will not be from the Big Bang, but to, from today back towards the Big Bang and arriving at that particular point, because that's where uh, uh, we are interested in knowing about the new state of matter, which is the nuclear matter, which is the soup of quarks and gluons. So uh, such states, it's believed to, to still exist today and it's existing uh, in several places. It is believed that along Long Island, this is Long Island in New York, where you see the green bubble there or the green circle, that's where the relativistic heavy ion collider is. Uh, it is believed that uh, quad gluon plasma has been created there. And more recently, of course, at the LHC, the top, top left hand side there. But also, it is believed that in the center of the neutron stars, that state of quark gluon plasma uh, might also exist. And in order to, to, to find out, uh, you just have to go and do experiments. Uh, that's what scientists do. And as I've said, I will not talk about the properties of those chemical elements, uh, <clears throat> but in order for us to travel back in time, we can take two of the heaviest nuclei that we can get our hands on. Uh, at RIC, we use uh, gold on gold, and uh, at LHC, it's lead on lead. Those are heavy uh, elements compared to your oxygen, compared to your hydrogen or the proton itself. So I will tell you why we need those heavy elements. Then you need to slam them together and, and have some cameras to, to take, to take uh, pictures of this uh, new matter that you produce uh, as to what is happening. I will tell you why you need uh, cameras that are very fast to take those pictures because this uh, new, in the, a new state, it lives for a very short while. And <clears throat> the idea for taking those heavy ions is we want to heat them and we want to compress them because we know what happens when you start heating uh, 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 these compounds and of course, we know that the nuclear matter is strongly bound. Yeah, there is a strong force, and you might need to really have uh, more heat on, and and even more pressure to let those quarks loose. And how do we do that? Uh, just like what we do uh, 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 with the phase diagram of water that we know, we we can do the same thing with the phase diagram now of a nuclear matter. And at this time, uh, we can hit the nuclear matter and go back to that early universe. So that's temperature there, which is 200 uh, MeV. That is two times 10 to the power of 12 Kelvin. So we have met this 10 to the power of 12, uh, 12 Kelvin in the previous plot that I've shown you. So this one is not put here because we know that one. This is coming from lattice QCD, which is a theory that predicted that if you heat nuclear matter and you heat it with high temperatures, uh, 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 you will undergo phase transition into a state of, of quarks and matter. That's that predicted by lattice QCD. If you go along the x-axis, if you compress the matter, that's where you're going to the neutron stars, the compact objects. Uh, uh, uh. So this phase diagram of nuclear matter is going to cover uh, really the heavy ion collisions, as I will show now all the way to the neutron stars. The program of heavy ion collisions started in the 1970s when people were coming up with the ideas, how can we actually study these phase transitions or the phase diagram of nuclear matter? And it was realized that if you can have uh, heavy ions and you, you compress uh, these heavy ions at high energy into a large volume, you might be able to study the properties of a new state of nuclear matter. 
and you can see the phase diagram then that people were contemplating as to what will happen. And this diagram has shifted to today's modern diagram with lots of experiments that are trying to uh, uh, map uh, 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 this structure. Uh, lots of studies going on. You can see that uh, RIC and LHC is really going towards the early universe, but there are now other experiments that have joined, uh, have joined NICA in JINR, uh, FAIR in, in, in Darmstadt. They are going to probe the very dense matter. This region has been probably probed uh, a lot, and we've got exciting results that are coming from that side. But if we want to go to astrophysics and we want to learn something, we might start to do experiments that uh, try to replicate what's happening in the, <clears throat> in the course of the neutron stars. And because we know that <clears throat> gravity plays an important role in the, in the study of neutron stars, as well as magnetic field, you cannot neglect the magnetic field. Now we have another X axis because we've got extreme densities, extreme temperatures, as well as extreme magnetic field when you start studying those astrophysical objects. And these things are the things that you cannot neglect. And these are the new sort of areas of studies where people are venturing into. <clears throat> the, the, the road to LHC, as I've said, started way back in the 1970s. And it's, it, has, it has taken various experiments from Bevelec to AGSS as at RIC to, to SPS and today at LHC. And uh, you can see the investment that goes into really looking into this subatomic uh, 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 matter or new state of matter, huge investment indeed. And uh, around 2000, this was the, 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 the nice picture that came from the first collisions of lead and uh, 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 apologies of gold and gold at RIC from the star detectors looking down the beam line, looking at uh, thousands and thousands of particles being ejected there. Uh, in search of that new state of, of, of matter. And going over to, to, to LHC, uh, uh, the, the journey continues uh, with the search for, for that new state of matter. And, 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 and some of us from South Africa have been privy to, to visit the lab before it, 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 it started in 2008, just to see what investment has gone into really studying this new state of matter using the ALICE detector. And, and now we know that this is the picture, uh, 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 probably hundreds if not thousand times the, the picture that we have seen at RIC in terms of the numbers of particles that are being produced. This is important for us when we start to ask the question, can you use thermodynamics and hydrodynamics to describe such a small system? Uh, given what you see, probably by now you should start to be convinced that it is possible to use that. At the same time, we do not rely only on those underground accelerators. We also look up in the sky to look at what is coming, uh, given to us by the nature from the universe. Uh, the neutral star collisions, uh, gravitational waves, all electromagnetic waves coming this side should be telling us about something that we cannot probe in the lab, but we have got natural laboratories in the sky. And, and we build all this tel telescope in the ground looking in the sky or listening like the SKA, but also some of the, the telescope, you put them uh, floating uh, above Earth, also trying to peep down into the universe and listening to the universe. Uh, for us, our interest is really looking at this new state of, 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 of matter, of course. And of course, we know that on August 17th, uh, 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 the first detection of uh, the collision of new, two neutron stars was, was, was recorded. And for us, it opens a new door to study this new state of matter because we were just speculating, but now we can start to have something. So once you have that as an, as, as an outline and you've got the motivation and you know that there is an investment myself and others as theorists, we start to really think hard and say, how can we actually make sure that the investment is, 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 is worth an effort? So the relativistic fluid dynamics, is a, it's a tool that we use to understand this new state of matter. Way back already in the 1970s, it was observed that at Bevelac, 
when you do even golden gold or, 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 or even small system, there was already an indication that the matter that you produce does flow. And if the matter that you produce that, that does flow, it means you can use hydrodynamics. But hydrodynamics needs you to have an understanding of the equation of state. And at the same time, a, a lattice group from Bellafield and everywhere, it was trying very hard to come up with the equation of state that is coming from the first principles of the lattice QCD, which is, which is the theory that we know today to, to describe the strong force. And here you see uh, 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 animation of a heavy ion collisions, lead and lead at LHC colliding uh, uh, with quarks and gluons being produced, but unfortunately, uh, immediately, they spring back into the hadrons that you see in the detector. Hence, you need very fast cameras. But even if you've got very fast cameras, no one has seen the quarks free. Therefore, you need to infer in order to say, indeed, we did produce such a state. And uh, theoretically, we conceptualize that uh, these uh, heavy ions, they will be flying into each other at very high speed. And we know from a special uh, theory of relativity, if you have got a spherical object, it will be elongated, it will be like a pancake as they fly into each other. And usually this, this, because they are moving relativistically, they pass each other because they are transparent. And the system they live in between is the one that will decay into all these hadrons that you then later detect. And we can have a nice space time diagram that we can describe such an evolution. And we can use hydrodynamics. Uh, hydrodynamics is nothing else but conservation laws. It's conservation of energy and momentum and the conservation of the particle numbers, but particle numbers are not conserved. It's the net charge, it's like your baryon number, your strangeness and the net charge and the trick charge that are conserved in these strong interactions. And you can solve this um, analytically. You can also solve this numerically. Uh, 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 this is what many folks do uh, when they employ hydrodynamics. And uh, as I've said, um, you will find that you will need an equation of state. And this equation of state is the one that will connect the heavy ion collisions in nuclear matter with the astrophysics objects, like uh, the neutron star, the equation of state of neutron, very dense matter. We can learn a lot to constrain the equation of state of heavy ion collisions uh, down here on Earth. Uh, there are various models uh, that I don't want to go into, 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 into those. But one of the model is the Jorken hydrodynamics, uh, which simplifies a whole lot of things because of the observables that we see that uh, in the central collisions, uh, most of the particle spectra, they don't change with uh, special coordinates. And therefore you can say the matter is flying away with the velocity, which is scaling like uh, the, the coordinates on the beam axis over time. And we can compare with the results. And this is hydrodynamics now being applied to the particle spectra that is observed. And this is ideal hydrodynamics. But we have now since moved away from ideal hydrodynamics to consider other effects such as dissipation. And, and in order to consider dissipation, uh, the equations start to become very difficult, but they are necessary if you are going to study a matter that uh, there is lots of investment and you just don't want to do back on the, uh, the envelope calculations without checking with the real calculations. And this is where we come in and we started to go and look at uh, equations like Navier-Stokes, for example, and we find that in relativity, nothing should be moving faster than the speed of light. And therefore these equations that are Navier-Stokes in relativity, we found that they are not desirable because they lead to velocities that are larger than the speed of light. And therefore we know that physically probably they are not suitable to describe such transient phenomena. Then we go beyond and start to look at the relaxation phenomena, uh, 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 which you, you can now handle the, the, the causality problems. And this is what we have been doing for, for, for a while now. And uh, uh, in 2002, when I was a PhD student, that's what I was actually looking at because I was bothered by the, 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 the non-causality nature of, um, of, of, of the hydrodynamics e e equations. 
And since then, this has become a factory of, of really studying this transient uh, phenomenon. And uh, 2005, it led to the Secretary of State said, uh, the scientists set up the perfect fluid. But then we knew that we were going to Europe now for the LHC's turn to see whether this is true. And um, as you can see, hydrodynamics now it's applied with the uh, shear viscosity to entropy ratio of about 0 0.16, meaning that the fluid that you're producing probably is not exactly perfect fluid as it was reported by the Secretary of State there, uh, 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 not, not the Secretary of State, Secretary of Energy uh, 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 there in that publication. It, it seems like you will need some small viscosity to uh, address the particle spectra that you see. But the, the fact is that the hydrodynamics is working and, uh, and, 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 and that gives us hope that we will be able to connect uh, uh, heavy ion collisions uh, to, 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 to astrophysics using the equation of state. Why is that the case? We now want to really connect the smallest to the largest. And uh, the, 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 the connection will be hydrodynamics and thermodynamics, but more importantly, the equation of state uh, that, is, that is scale in, invariant, especially hydrodynamics. It is very much scale invariant. And we know what happens on the 17th of, of, of August 2017. This became the, the breakthrough of, 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 of the year in 2017, the discovery of the collision of the, the two neutron stars mimicking the collisions of two heavy ions like lead and lead. But this is on a much larger scale. And we are hopeful that uh, we will be able to study such a state with a much bigger you know, time frame much bigger size, and that will also inform us about the nuclear collisions that we're trying to do here on Earth. So that's very exciting. But once you venture there, one thing you can no longer neglect is gravity. And hence, Einstein's equations are, are come into, 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 into our minds to solve this. And this is no longer easy. But with the advent of new computer, uh, computational uh, hardware, software, uh, and, and the speed, uh, it should be uh, possible. And this is what people are actually doing uh, uh, nowadays to really connect the two. And uh, just to remind you that there are also simple models that we, one can, can use. Uh, the mass radius uh, study can constrain the equation of state and, 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 and such constraint on the question of state uh, can then inform our dense nuclear matter that we produce in Fair and, and at Nika and, uh, and Dubna. Why are we interested in, in this new study of gravitational waves? Uh, the, tide, the tidal deformation uh, 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 will give us about something about the compactness of the neutron stars that are colliding, uh, uh, giving us uh, the information that we need, but also the, the electromagnetic signatures also uh, they should be able to tell us something about the equation of state itself. Uh, we know that uh, as, as, as the collisions uh, uh, wind down, uh, uh, that state is very sensitive to the equation of state. And therefore, we are also excited. This is, this is something that is really new it, 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 because we now have the data that is coming from LIGO and, 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 and uh, uh, elsewhere. Uh, let me uh, say that South Africa is, uh, is very much at a, at a prime stage because of the SKA and the science question that we are going to, to, to answer. But South Africa was also part of that observation of that event of the 17th or 8th, 17th, which make us very much excited, whether you're an astrophysicist or a nuclear physicist, because nuclear physicists will be there to tell us uh, how much gold was produced in such a in such a collision. So it brings all the scientists uh, uh, across the spectrum in South Africa to work on connecting the small and the largest. And and to the students that are here, the future is really really bright, and you are not limited by what uh, the, the the nuclear phys physics that you are studying, because your knowledge will be needed at the SK Science and elsewhere. Uh, and as I uh, conclude, I want to also bring to the attention that we have the latest paper that we are going beyond uh, the, the second order fluid dynamics 
because of, 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 of some issues that we come across as we want to connect um, uh, as uh, uh, heavy iron collisions and the astrophysics. And I will invite colleagues to go and read uh, uh, this paper. It's very exciting. It brings new phenomena that, that we didn't know beyond Navier-Stokes and beyond ideal fluid dynamics, the coupling of various viscous processes uh, gives us new insights that we are still trying to learn what could they mean. And uh, the takeaway message here is that relativistic fluid dynamics model has been used successfully in heavy ion collisions and it works. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that South African scientists have been contributing to, 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 to such study. Um, uh, uh, and now we are also venturing into connecting uh, uh, the heavy ion collisions with the neutron uh, uh, star collisions, which is an exciting field on its own. And we think that um, uh, SKA itself will even actually bring some of the answers that theoretically we, we are pondering, but we think that uh, uh, SKA will, will, will assist us in, in answering that, some of the questions. Even GSI, a fair experiment, and NICA at, 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 at Dubna, we are, we are waiting for the machines to be switched on. So the future in this direction is becoming brighter. I'd like to thank you for your attention and for the organizers to invite me to come and share this story. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Muronga. We are uh, great talk. Uh, you managed to uh, explain us the, um, very nicely the connections between astrophysics and uh, uh, neutron stars and uh, nuclear physics. And uh, we have a few minutes for a couple of questions if anybody would like to ask a question. I have a question then. So in your opinion, what is the most important experimental signature for a quark gluon plasma? Uh, yes, yeah, this is, this is yeah, it's, 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 it's a question that I, I get asked a lot when, when I present this. Um, uh, if, if, you, if you ask an experimentalist, probably it's done deal. The Podglone plasma is there. If you ask the theorists, they are not yet there. And, 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 and the reason being, um, so far, um, uh, 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 some of the signatures that are being proposed, uh, uh, it's easy to counter them. Uh, uh, but uh, within the hydrodynamics, it is... It is um, it is probably the 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 anisotrop the, the, the anisotropy signature that you can only find it within the quark gluon plasma and not in the hadronic phase, and that is that is what is called referred to as the elliptic flow or the the V two. Uh, I think because the equation of state, the only equation of state that that can work with the experiment assumes that you have produced quarks and gluons and the state of quarks and gluons. A quark gluon plasma, and uh, it cannot be done with the, the hadrons. So for me, that is probably the, the most uh, significant one. The others, uh, like the jet quenching, uh, the, the the suppression, uh, uh, you can one can argue that if you have got a very much hot hadron gas without quark gluon plasma, you can burn any jet that is going through your medium. So so for me, it will be the, the elliptical flow. Okay, thank you very much. We uh, we have time for another brief question. So I see there are two questions. One is the symmetry energy um, of the chat. See. Yes, so 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 that that symmetry ah, yes. has play play a very important role in the equation of state. I, I I didn't spend much time on that. So 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 yes, there are plots that are could have uh, could have shown the sensitivity to the equation of state to the symmetry energy. And you will have recalled that uh, uh, one of the phase diagram, it has got, uh, it also has the, the axis, which has got the number of neutrons minus the number of protons. And looking also as the isospin uh, uh, symmetry. Uh, uh, people are looking at all this, uh, 
It is just that because of the excitement with the gravitational waves, uh, uh, people have, 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 have now really looked at what the data is, is, is telling us. And I hope the data will also tell us about this symmetric energy. Uh, if, 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 if we can, um, you know, investigate further. So, so that's a good question. And the other question is that, how do you particularly relate it to the question of saying, yes, it's the same thing, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to move on, but I'd like to thank you again for uh, a great talk. Uh